a blue marble, our home planet, planet Earth. This picture was taken on December 7, 1972, by the crew of Apollo 17, the last crew to go to the moon. It's a remarkable image for many reasons. The guys who took this picture had just left planet Earth, the coast of Florida, five hours before when this shot was taken. Two hours before this shot was taken, they had left low Earth or orbit and were on their way to the moon. You can see Africa there, Madagascar. It's all sort of upside down with the South Pole on the top because that's the attitude that they had at that moment. It was the first time that a human being had taken a picture of the full Earth disk in all its glory. You could all, almost call it a, a full Earth. This image inspires me for three reasons. First, it represents to me the essence of the Apollo program, which for me was the best of humanity, the moment when humanity lived up to its full potential. Second, the image had a profound impact on our planet, galvanizing social and environmental movements and having a profound transformative impact on the three guys who took that picture. Third, and perhaps this is best phrased in the form of a question, what motivates me and inspires me about this shot as it relates to Virgin Galactic is the question, what would be the impact on planet Earth if everyone had the opportunity to see this site with their own eyes? Now today I want to take you on a journey that you haven't taken yet. I want to take you on a voyage that's in your future. I want to describe over the next few minutes, the story of your first flight to space. And before I tell you that, before I get into it, I want to ask a quick question. If money and safety were no issue, how many people here would like to go to space? It's my kind of crowd. <laughs> what is remarkable is that many of you may take that trip starting next year. Some of you may take that trip years in the future, and some of you may never take that trip. But I am convinced that many, if not most of you in this room, will have the opportunity to have that space flight. Some of you may take that trip because you are inspired by the profound impact that it can have on your personal lives. Some of you may be excited about the idea of being the first of something or about the adventure of the trip. And some of you, I bet some of you in particular, may go because you have a meeting in Japan that afternoon, and getting from Manhattan to Japan and back in time to see the kids for dinner is just not possible with anything other than a space plane. So we're going to talk to you about that trip now. But before I begin, I just want to say one other thing, which is the following. I'm going to show you some pictures, and I'm going to show you some video over the next few minutes. Every one of those pictures is real. There's no CGI. There's no models. This is all real stuff that's happening today, and uh, over the next few years, it's going to have a profound impact on our planet. So we'll start our expedition over the desert of New Mexico. To go to space, you need a spaceport. And we've built ours in southern New Mexico. Here's a picture of it as you approach the, the spaceport. It's called Spaceport America. It's just to the east of a town called Truth or Consequences, which I think is just absolutely fantastic. <laughs> If we go up above it, we see that it's a modern structure that rises out of the landscape, and we think it's a fantastic base point, and we've called it our gateway to space. In the background, you can see the runway that we'll use to take off, and we're not going to be the only users of this new uh, place in the world. SpaceX is going to be testing its stuff uh, a little bit to the south, and there are other companies like Armadillo and Up Aerospace that are doing things there as well. So we're going to take you down in your first night of your trip to space, it's going to be a beautiful night. You'll meet your other crew members. You'll have five other people that you'll be going to space with. And you'll meet the vehicles for the first time. These are our vehicles at Virgin Galactic. The middle thing is the spaceship. It's called Spaceship Two. And the carrier aircraft, which has the twin hulls around it, is the White Knight. We call the White Knight Eve because it's the mothership for the vehicle and also because Richard Branson's mom is called Eve. In the uh, middle is the spaceship, and we only had one thing that we could call that, and that is obviously Enterprise, and so we did. <laughs> the next day, you'll meet your pilots. Here's our chief pilot, Dave Mackay. He's an incredible person. He was an RAF test pilot for the, for the Brits, 
Then he came over to Virgin Atlantic and became one of their senior pilots. But his dream was to go to space. And so he took the risk. He took the audacious, bold move to say he was going to take his, his family, move over to the United States, move to California, and become our chief pilot. And he's fantastic. Over that course of that next day, you'll be trained in high G maneuvers so that you have the right training uh, to go uh, for that initial launch. You'll also be trained in low G and microgravity. We'll use planes to, to train you on, on how to uh, act once you get into space. Apparently, it's a lot of fun. And then on the morning of your space flight, you'll get up early, 4 AM, 5 AM, and you'll go out. And we'll roll the vehicles out onto the tarmac. And you'll have your right stuff moment where you walk out with your other folks out to your waiting spaceship. And you'll have your other pilots there, because we'll need four of them. And you see Dave again. And you'll see the guy on the left is Mike Masucci. He's a former U-2 pilot and an F-16 pilot. The guy on the right is uh, CJ Sturko. He flew the space shuttle four times to space, to the International Space Station. And then when they retired the shuttle, he wanted to keep flying people to space. So he said, what am I going to do? He said, well, I'm going to come to Virgin Galactic and keep flying people into space. They're fantastic. We'll place that vehicle out on the runway, we'll spool up the four jet engines, and we'll take off. And we'll start circling above Spaceport America, and we'll get up to 52,000 feet. We'll start to level off. And that's the moment when I think people's stomachs will get a little tight, because they know that they're about to take that trip into space. And this is the moment, just before you get released from the mothership, that I think is going to be one of the most exciting ones. Can you imagine that moment? just before the rocket fires. I'm going to play a little bit of video. It's a real video. It's from one of our test flights. And, uh, and I'll talk you through that experience. So you're going to come off, and you're going to feel a few seconds of weightlessness. And then within just a couple of seconds, you'll feel the force of three and a half times the force of gravity pushing you back into your seat. And Dave Mackay, the chief pilot, will turn that vehicle vertical so that you're on your back going 2,000 miles an hour straight up into space. And that rocket motor will burn out after 60 seconds. And you'll feel instantly that feeling of weightlessness. And you'll be able to get out of your seat. And you'll be able to look around the planet. And what will you see? when you get up there. Well, that's the most exciting thing. Um, here's a final view of that journey um, taken from the, uh, from the vehicle itself. And it's going to be sort of a smooth ride to start, but it'll get faster and faster as you go higher and higher. And uh, that moment when you finally are able to get out, out of your seat is the thing that fundamentally excites me, because you will see space and our home planet, the blue marble. This is the thing that astronauts say when they get up there profoundly affects them. They say it affects the whole way that they view the world and the way they view each other. You'll come down, re-enter like a feather glide, and you'll come down and you'll land on the, on the runway at Spaceport America. Maybe have some people there waiting for you to celebrate your moment. This is a picture, actually, of some of our astronauts. We've got 650 people who signed up to fly with us. And of course, since it's a virgin event, we're going to have to throw you a big party that night. But let's talk about the importance of what we're talking about. For me, what's exciting is that humanity must achieve its true potential. And that's what's exciting to me about space. We look at Apollo, and we look at the Mars rovers, and now we look at Virgin Galactic and SpaceX and all these things. And they're picking up the baton of audacious, bold goals that's truly what we need to do to achieve what we're meant to do. Now, some of our world is getting more and more risk averse. And I think what's important is that this community is critical to enabling some of these big goals and big dreams. We're excited to do that. We're excited to participate in that. We think by establishing this new service to space, we're going to change the way people view life on Earth. We're going to establish the foundation for high-speed point-to-point travel, we think that we're going to, in some small way, uh, affect the trajectory of the planet. The main point, though, is that that audaciousness, that boldness, can't just be one project or one
country or one nation. We all have to be working on these big audacious goals to move us forward and to fulfill our true potential. Thanks for your time today, and I look forward to hearing your bold plans as well.